ESF.
from the worship center to you, our family and friends. On behalf of our bishop and our pastor, Pastor Maya, we thank you for joining us on this fourth Sunday of August. It's such a privilege and such a blessing to be in the midst of with you today. So as we go on in service, we would like for you to share, have a watch party, hit a couple of likes, hit a couple of hearts, just to engage with us, to let us know that you're here with us in service on this morning. So as we get ready to go into the service, we ask that you get ready, put in your seatbelts, actually take your seatbelts off, because we're getting ready to go higher and higher and higher in God. So God bless you and enjoy the service. Good morning, TWC family and everybody that's watching. Why don't you gather your family together as we enter into our moment of prayer? Would you just lift your hands and begin to thank the Lord right where you are? Begin to thank Him for life. Begin to thank Him for love. Begin to thank Him for joy. Begin to thank Him for keeping you when you didn't want to be kept. Would you just lift up a praise right there? Father, we bless you in this place, God. Father, we come to you, oh God, and we adore you for who you are, God. We thank you for your might, and we thank you for your splendor, even now, Lord. And Father, we come to you, oh God, not to beg you of anything, but we're requesting, oh God, that you would take care of us, oh God, as you already have. We bless you right now in the name of Jesus, and we give your name glory. We look to the hills because you are our helper, oh God.
We know you're well able. We know you're well able, God. So have your way. And everybody that's listening, even if you're listening for a family member, begin to speak the word of the Lord and call out their name right now. For God is healing. He is causing that negative thing turned into a positive. The, the impossible thing is now possible with God. We thank you, O oh Lord. We give your name glory. And we thank you that even now your countenance is shining upon us. This is our prayer. And we believe it in Jesus' name. to be true is that you cannot be God given. Yeah. The more you give, the more he gives to you. And so you can give through Givelify Worship Center STL or you can give via Cash App and dollar sign TWC STL and as the words appear on the screen, I invite you to declare with me your wealthy place. According to the word of God, I decree that money come into the body of Christ and money come into me for the sake of the gospel. I am laying a foundation and God is performing his word in my life. I call my local church debt free. I call in all the necessary finances to completely pay for all the buildings, properties, and equipments and to do everything God has called us as a church to do. We will tell the untold. We will reach the unreached and help believers walk in faith and victory by the anointed teaching and preaching of the gospel. I call myself debt free. I proclaim that I have the necessary finances to do everything God has called me to do with enough in store to bless others. Father, I honor you by putting you first in my finances and giving you my best in tithes and offering. I thank you that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus and grant the desires of my heart. You are opening the windows of heaven and pouring me out a blessing until it overflows. I believe I receive in every area of my life. Double anointing. Double rejoicing. Double in my giving. Double in my receiving. Double anointing. Double rejoicing. Double in my giving. And double in my receiving. Double anointing, yeah. double rejoicing, double in my giving, double in my receiving, double in my income, double in my assets. I receive double in Jesus' name.
so. And so it is. And I'll give you my testimony the next time I come back.
While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. I want you to jump over to Deuteronomy 8. And we're going to start at verse 2. And it says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. I want you to jump down to verse 14. And it says, Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions, and drought where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who led thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. The word of the Lord is blessed. I want you to remember those verses in those scriptures, and I want to talk to you today from the subject temporary inconvenience. I came to tell somebody today that what you're going through won't last forever. I came to tell you that the storm won't last always. That emotional battle isn't eternal. That financial struggle isn't eternal. That sickness isn't eternal. That job that's making you miserable isn't eternal. That problem that makes you cry, yeah, listen, it is eternal. That pain of betrayal, the pain of deception isn't eternal, but it's temporary. Somebody shout out with me from your home. I may be crying today, but I'll be smiling again in a little while. I may be kind of broke today, but I'll have more than enough in a little while. I may be in pain today, but I'm defending my healing and the manifestation is on the way. I may be walking today, but my car is on the way. Whatever you are in today, I came to encourage you and to tell you that it's just a temporary inconvenience. You be encouraged today because what you're going through and what you're in is a temporary inconvenience. Now, the Bible says God suffered them to hunger. That means God let them get hungry. He let them get thirsty. He let them get in tight places and in times of distress. And he let them get into discomfort. Am I talking to anyone online today who knows that sometimes God will let you get in trouble? Do I have anybody out there who knows that he will let you get hungry sometimes? He, he will let you get in a place where your back is up against the wall. Why? So that he can prove you and put your faith to test to find out what's in your heart. The good news is this. It's only a temporary inconvenience. Temporal. Temporal. It means for a while, for a season, a short while, lasting only for a limited period of time. Deuteronomy 8, 16 tells us to, it will do, it's to do the good at thy latter end. You know, it's like when you have to turn the water off to fix your pipes. You can't fix the pipes with the water on. You got to turn the water off to fix the pipes. It's, it's just a temporary inconvenience. 
inconvenience. Life is full of temporary inconveniences. Nobody enjoys them. But there is a positive side to them. The wilderness, for, for what we read in Deuteronomy, the wilderness was never supposed to be fun. It wasn't supposed to be comfortable. It wasn't even supposed to be enjoyable. It was supposed to be difficult, and it was supposed to be undesirable. It was supposed to be hot during the day and freezing cold at night. The ground was supposed to be hard. They were supposed to get hungry and thirsty. They were supposed to hate the wilderness and find it undesirable. They were supposed to hate being surrounded by deadly poisonous snakes and scorpions. They were supposed to love God and be thankful for his daily provisions but they were supposed to hate the wilderness. God intended for it to be a temporary inconvenience. He wanted them to hate the wilderness so much so that they would run into their promised land. The problem was that they got adjusted to the wilderness mentality. The problem was that they got comfortable just scraping by. The problem was they got satisfied with just bring this to your front door. Let me bring this smack dab to your world and to your face and in your language. They got they got satisfied with having just enough to put gas in the car. They got satisfied with just enough to buy some milk and bread and maybe some bologna. I know you hear, I hear you. I don't eat pork pasta. Well, you got comfortable enough just to have enough to buy you some turkey. Just enough to keep the lights on. Just enough to survive. Just enough to keep your sanity. Just enough peace to keep your sanity, but not enough peace to sleep at night. Just enough to survive. Just enough faith to believe you'll go to heaven when you die, but not enough to believe I can walk in divine health and healing right here and right now. Yes, God gave them just enough. God gave them manna from heaven and water from the rock, and their clothes didn't wear out, and their shoes didn't wear out, but all of that was just provision for the journey. It was just provision for the journey. It was to sustain them until they came into the promised land. They were supposed to transition from the wilderness of just enough to the promised land of more than enough. Somebody watching right now needs to tell yourself it's just a temporary inconvenience and I'm not getting stuck here. It's a temporary inconvenience and I will not be stuck in this mentality. Yes, God's been good to me, but I'm going somewhere. Come on, say it. Yes, God's been good. He's been faithful. He's kept me, but there's something else he has prepared for me. There's something else he has finished for me. There's something else he has in store for me. I'm going somewhere. And Paul which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory now when you think about midnight let's bring this example when you think about midnight it's not morning and it's not night, right? It's, it's not morning and it's not night, it's midnight. The midnight hour is critical because that's when it can go either way. More people die at the midnight hour than any other time. Think about it. It can go either way. Paul and Silas, be humiliated and thrown into prison, decided that at midnight they pray and sing praises to God. As a result, God shook the jailhouse off its foundation, opened every door, and set every prisoner free. 
The good news today is God still works the night shift. <laughs> He's still working the midnight hour. The good thing I like about midnight is it's gone in 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, you can go from one day to another day. In 60 seconds, you can go from the temporary inconvenience to the promised land. In 60 seconds, you can go from pain to praise. In 60 seconds, you can go from sick to well. In 60 seconds, you can go from dark to light. For in 60 seconds, you can go from lost to found, from weeping to rejoicing, from broke, busted, and disgusted to divine overflow. It doesn't take God long to do anything. Listen to me. You might be in your midnight hour. You might be in a day of temporary inconvenience. But don't you dare let the dark fool you. You're on the verge of a new day. I know it's dark. It's a deep darkness amongst you. But don't you dare let the dark fool you. You're on the verge of a new day. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. Encourage yourself today and say, it'll be over in a minute. It'll be over in 60 seconds. It'll be over in just a little while. In just a little while. Paul said, our light affliction, which is just only for a moment, working for us. And I declare, it's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. 
looking at the things which are not seen. The definition of look means to consider, think on, contemplate, regard, observe, set your attention on. You have to have your eyes full of the word of God. Hear me. You need to have your eyes full of the word of God. So much so that you start saying, I can't see sickness anymore. <laughs> because all I see is that by his stripes I am healed. I need to say that again. Your eyes have to be so full of the word of God that you start saying, I can't see my sickness anymore. Because all I can see is that by his stripes I am healed. I can't see that financial problem anymore. Because all
tools and everything that's needed to walk this new part of life. So we are excited and we're so excited that we're going to show you and just show you some hearts right now. And can we just celebrate that some more names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Hallelujah! God is good. He is so good. Hallelujah, man. Well, God certainly is good. And I am just so excited about uh, everything that God is doing. Are you excited? Are you excited? And you know what? It's just great to belong to a place, to the house of worship, where we get fresh word and we can grow weekly. And so, again, if you have not had a chance, this is still a good time to deposit that seed and deposit your faith and go ahead and send that uh, that deposit and that seed to Cash App. You can do it at dollar sign, T-W-C-S-T-L, or give a fly at the Worship Center. We are so excited that you tuned in today. The worship is just refreshing. Hopefully you feel motivated, encouraged, and your faith has increased to conquer this next week. And we always are here with you. We're here rooting for you. And God loves you. So we're going to see you right here, same place, same time next week. Until next time, family, God bless you. God keep you. All right.